Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be about the July releases that I'm very excited about. I think I had 40 books on my list coming out this month, which is kind of insane, but I'm only going to talk to you about, I think, 17 of them today because we don't need to be here for hours. Before we get started, leave a book emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. So I do want to just briefly mention before kind of jumping into the ones that I want to focus on, I have read Arcs of Too Good, Too Good to Be Real by Melanie Johnson, and this is an adult romance that comes out July 6th, as well as Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda, which comes out July 13th, and that's an adult thriller. So I already have a review posted for Such a Quiet Place, and we'll probably be posting one soon. So we'll move our way through the month, and the first book I'll talk about came out July 1st, and that's Hex on the Beach, and this is an anthology by Kelly Armstrong, Janine Frost, and Melissa Marr. This has three stories from, you know, their, their worlds, and basically it's like a summer vacation, but things kind of go awry. So the story by Janine Frost focuses on Kat from the Night Huntress world, which is a series that I really loved and I'm excited to kind of return to that. So Kat is basically trying to just have a fun vacation with her best friend Denise, but witches crash the party and a fun getaway turns into a paranormal showdown. For Kelly Armstrong's contribution, it's We've got the goddess of love setting her sights on the Bennett sisters, and this is from the Cursed Luck world, I believe. The goddess of love wants to do some Memorial Day matchmaking, but <laughs> the plan is to resurrect a local unsolved mystery for the sisters and their love interest to solve, but of course nothing goes according to plan. So I haven't read anything from this world yet, but I did actually just buy the physical copy, so you know I'm definitely going to do that soon. I love Kelly Armstrong's writing though, so I feel you know pretty positive about this. And then finally, the other story is by Melissa Marr, who I haven't read anything from, but I feel like this could be a fun introduction to her writing. Have this fun spa weekend away with friends in a city free of monsters. What could be better? Jen's necromancy has been on the fritz, so a recharge sounds perfect until she arrives in San Diego to discover that either the spa is two steps beyond weird or there's magic foot. So that sounds like a really fun anthology. I like that it's kind of, you know, like a summer getaway theme. So... I think this sounds pretty fun, and again, I've read books by two of these authors already and know that I love them, so I feel very optimistic about this. So now we'll move to July 6th, and the first book I'll talk about here is Capture the Crown by Jennifer Eastip. So this is a... we're returning to the Crown of Shards world, but this is the first book in a new trilogy, I think. So I really love the initial trilogy set in this world. I think it's super fun, has... there's a lot of really great magic, super great characters. So we're following a different character who we did meet in the previous series, but uh, Gemma has a reputation for being a pampered princess who is more interested in pretty gowns, sparkling jewelry, and other frivolous things than learning how to rule this kingdom. This is basically just an act to hide the fact that she has some like powerful mind magic and is actually a spy. So she's undercover and is trying to figure out who's stealing large amounts of tear stone from one of the royal mines when she encounters this prince who is her mortal enemy. So she tries to steer clear of him, but when she finds herself behind enemy lines, she reluctantly joins forces with him. And also coming to her aid is her beloved gargoyle. So despite the fact that these two countries are old, bitter enemies, a dangerous attraction sparks between our characters. And further complicating matters is his murderous family, especially, especially the queen, who is the mastermind behind the massacre that happened in the original series. So the closer Gemma gets to the stolen tear stone, the more deadly plot she uncovers. Everyone is trying to capture the crown, but only one queen can sit on the throne. So I'm definitely going to be reading this. I would have already pre-ordered it, but I know it's coming in the July Unplugged book box for the adult box that I get. So I was like, perfect. I, you know, I know that's on, on its way and I can't wait to read this. I, like I said, I think the initial Crown of Shards trilogy was just really fun. The Crown of Shards trilogy had some really great romance, so I'm kind of expecting that again here. And, you know, of course this like enemies to lovers type romance tends to work really well for me. So I think this is going to be great. So the other book that comes out July 6th is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. Now I have actually pre-ordered this one as well. And this is a YA fantasy. And I believe there are some sort of connections with the Spin the Dawn duology, which I really loved. So I'm really excited for that. But we have the princess of Kiata who has a secret. Forbidden magic runs through her veins. Normally she conceals it well, but on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, she loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, you know, postponing this wedding she never wanted, but it also catches the attention of her stepmother. 
who is actually a sorceress in her own right, and she banishes the young princess, turning her brothers into cranes. Oh yeah, I think this is actually like a fairy tale type retelling. Yes, okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah. She warns Shiori, our main character, that she must speak of it to no one. For every with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. So, penniless, voiceless, and alone, she searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only she can set the kingdom to rights, but to do so, she must put, place her trace in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to forswear, no matter the cost. So we've got the wild swans, I guess elements of Cinderella, and some East Asian folklore. So this sounds like so much fun. Like I really enjoyed the Spin the Dawn duology and like definitely know that Elizabeth Lim can write really well and I love these fairy tale aspects. So yeah, like I said, I've already pre-ordered this and I think it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see what happens here. So now we'll move to July 13th and the first book I'll talk about here is A Psalm for the Wild Built and this is by Becky Chambers. It's a novella. And I, you know, I feel pretty optimistic about this already because I love Becky Chambers' writing. So this is a new series, and it's evidently been centuries since the robots of Panga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot, there to honor the old promise of checking in. The robot cannot go back until the question of what do people need is answered. But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. So I guess this is asking, in a world where people have what they want, does having more matter? So this sounds really interesting. I'm kind of curious about this like robot situation and also like what is a tea monk? I don't know, but I want to find out. I think Becky Chambers does a really great job of character development, you know, with the Wayfair series in particular, yeah, it's very character driven, but she just creates these really wonderful relationships and I just absolutely adore her books. So I can't wait to check this one out. The next book that comes out July 13th is The Justice and Revenge by Ryan Van Loan. So this is the second book in this Fall of the Gods series. I don't know if it's a duology or not, but uh, I read the first book, which is The Sin and the Steel, last year, I think, and enjoyed it. It's definitely like a swashbuckling adventure and, you know, pirates, cool mages and magic, and lots of like really interesting things with the gods. So I'm definitely excited to see how this continues. But let me let me tell you the plot here. <laughs> so we have this island nation that's a land of flint and steel, fail and gear work of gods both dead and sleeping. It is a society where the wealthy few rule the impoverished many. So our main character, who is a former street rat, along with her partner, who is the ex-soldier, who has been her partner in crime solving, they've claimed seats on the board of this trading company, and she plans, Buck plans to destroy the nobility from within, which is much harder than she expected. So, you know, they're having to deal with boardroom politics and mages, so they find a potential patron in the ruler of Cervenza, which is this island nation. So this deal that they have to do is, uh, by the night of the masquerade, they have to unmask whoever has been attempting to assassinate this ruler, and therefore they will earn her support in the halls of power. Blow the deadline and she'll have them deported, though, to opposite ends of the world. We've got Buck, who is has razor sharp intellect and then we have Eld who has a razor sharp sh sword. They have to hit the streets just as the shadow religious conflict between the gods begins to break into open warfare. Those closest to our characters begin turning up with their throat slit am amid rumors that a hidden mastermind is behind everything that's going wrong in this nation. So we've got wrathful gods, hostile nobles, and a secret enemy bent on revenge and they will have to pull out every trick in their arsenal to survive. So that sounds like a lot of fun. Like I mentioned with the first book, I definitely want to see where the plot goes, particularly after that ending. <laughs> I liked the different types of magic. There were like dead walkers who could basically like make and control zombies. There was like transfiguration magic. And then of course with these like this piratey aspect, I think that's perfect to read in the summer. So that sounds really promising. We also have some really great side characters, including a pirate queen. So I definitely just want to see what happens to our characters. The next book that comes out July 13th is A Desert Torn Asunder by Bradley P. Bollier. So this is the sixth and last book in the Song of the Shattered Sand series, which I've really loved. I've pre-ordered this one because I just like absolutely need to know what happens here. This is a desert fantasy and essentially like in the beginning, the plot was basically we're following Shada, who wants to seek revenge against the 12 kings in Sherak High. And really, I think the plot has expanded over the course of the series. So like I'm dying to know what happens next. But, so we have these uh, plans of the desert gods that are coming to fruition. So we have, 
We also have a deposed queen who is hoping to raise the buried elder god, which was an event that would bring ruin to the desert. So Shada and some of our other characters are sailing for their ancestral home to bring this traitor to justice. And unfortunately, the uh, desert tribes have united again under the traitor's banner. <laughs> so their plan is a holy crusade to annihilate Sherakai, which is a thing sought by many in the tribes. But in Sherakai, we also have a blood mage who is examining this strange gateway between worlds, hoping to be able to close it. And we also have a king who is hunting for this deposed queen, but then finds, but always finds himself two steps behind. We have to deal with this this elder god and you know, people thinking that the end is near. That sounds utterly epic, right? Like, I just am dying to find out what all is going on. But I've really enjoyed this. I think it's fun that it's a desert fantasy, and I think it's very well written, and there's just, you know, a lot of characters that I really like. I also like how we have a lot of involvement with the different gods. I think that's super cool. I definitely recommend this series. The next book that comes out July 13th is How Sweet It Is by Dylan Newton. So this is an adult romance. And this, this sounds pretty great. It's, it's like pitched as the queen of romance falling for the king of horror. And it's a rom-com. So we have event planner Kate Sweet, who is famous for creating the perfect happily ever after moment for her clients to dream weddings. So how is it that her best friend has roped her into planning a best-selling horror writer's book launch extravaganza? But the second she meets, or rather accidentally names, the drop-dead hot Drake Matthews, her well-ordered life quickly transforms into an absolute nightmare. So I guess he's tired of the spotlight and tired of his reputation as the Knight of Nightmares. He's really a nice guy, but he's not prepared for Kate, who's a fearless agent of chaos and steel tip stilettos, or for that sweet sting of attraction he feels for her. She's inspiring to take his writing in a whole new direction, one that no one expects, because now, you know, they're changing up the rules and this plot twist just might surprise everyone, including themselves. So that seems really funny. I like that this is you know, combining romance and, and horror. I think that's just a, a, a fun combination. I'm definitely intrigued by that premise. We have very different people and I'm, I'm curious to see how well they work together. The next book that comes out July 13th is Look What You Made Me Do by Elaine Murphy. So this is an adult thriller and I'm actually reading an arc of this right now. But yeah, so this, uh, this is fun. <laughs> so Carrie just wants a normal life. She doesn't need a happily ever after. She'll just settle for after. After a decade of helping her sister hide her victims. After a lifetime of lies. I think she's just kind of looking for a safe and boring life and not having to trek through the woods at night with a dead body wrapped in a carpet. Her sister, Becca, who is a serial killer, just wants to get away with murder. She doesn't believe in happily ever after because she's already happy. She's gotten away with murder for a decade and has blackmailed her sister into helping her hide the evidence. What more could a girl want? But first they have to stop a serial killer. So I guess 13 bodies are discovered in their small town and people are shocked. But not as shocked as Carrie, who thought she knew all the details of her sister's assorted pastime. But when she's, the sister swears that she's not behind these new crimes, they realize the town has a second serial killer who has the sisters in his sights and what he wants is Carrie. So, I mean, that just sounds fun. I mean, like, multiple serial killers going on. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great time. And I, like I said, I am currently reading an arc of this. Granted, I'm only, like, a chapter into it, but it's good so far. Becca, our serial killer, is, is obviously a, very much a psychopath, and I'm curious to see how Becca and Carrie kind of deal with this, this other serial killer. Like, will Becca change her ways? Will she kill this other serial, serial killer? I have no idea, but I definitely want to find out. And like I said, it's, it's definitely fun so far. The next book that comes out July 13th is Bubble, and this is by uh, Jordan Morris, Sarah Morgan, Tony Cliff, and Natalie Reese. This is a graphic novel based on a podcast, which I have not listened to. This is a satirical take on the gig economy. So we have a city that was built and maintained by corporate benevolence, and it's a literal bubble of safety and order and amazing coffee in the midst of the brush, which is a harsh alien wilderness ruled by monstrous imps and road bands of humans. Humans like Morgan, who's brush born and bubble raised and fully capable of fending off an imp attack during her morning jog. She's got a great routine going. She has a chill day job. She recreationally kills the occasional imp, and then she takes that imp home for her roommate and BFF, Annie, to transform into drugs as a side hustle. But cracks appear in her tidy life when one of those imps nearly murders a delivery guy in her apartment, accidentally transforming him into a brush-powered mutant in the process. 
And when her company launches this gig economy app for imp extermination, she finds herself press gained into kicking her stabby side job up to the next level as she battles a parade of monsters and mon monstrously brush turned citizens from a living hipster beard to a book club hive mind. So that sounds just bizarre and like fun. I don't know. I'm, I'm very curious to see how this goes. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by the fact that this there's going to be some sort of app for murdering imps. <laughs> but I also like how we have, you know, like monsters, but also mutants. I think that's going to be a really interesting combination. I haven't listened to this podcast, or I, th I think it's a podcast that it, that's based on, so I've really no idea what to expect. But I feel like this this idea could work really well as a graphic novel, and it seems like the artwork is pretty brightly colored, which certainly grabs my attention. So I'm curious to check this one out for sure. So now we'll move to July 20th, and the first book I'll talk about here is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. So I've pre-ordered this as well because I've really enjoyed Samantha Downing's books in the past. So this is another adult thriller, and this is set at a prestigious private school. So Teddy has won the Teacher of the Year at the prestigious Belmont Academy. He says his wife couldn't be more proud than no one has seen her in a while. Teddy really can't be bothered with a few mysterious deaths on campus that are looking more and more like murder or the student digging a little too deep into his personal life. His main focus is pushing these kids to their full academic potential. All he wants is for her colleagues and the endlessly medicine parents to stay out of his way. If not, well, they'll get what they deserve. <laughs> if it's, if it's, it's really too bad that sometimes excellence can come at such a high cost. So this just sounds delightful. I mean, I like that it's set at a private school. Again, like I mentioned, I have really enjoyed some of the Downing's books before. I think they're very fast paced, certainly easy to read. The characters are often not likable, but they're not meant to be likable. And it's just really fun to just kind of witness all these messed up dynamics and just travel down this these crazy paths with our uh, with our terrible characters. So I'm really excited to read this and see what she has in store for us. The next book that comes out July 20th is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. So I think this comes in the August Adult Unplugged book box, which I'm getting, so I'm definitely excited about this. So this is basically like Mulan-ish, but also a reimagining of the rise of the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. We have this famine-stricken village um, with two children who are given two fates. We have a boy who is given greatness, a girl nothingness. So in 1345, China is under harsh Mongol rule. For the starving peasants of the Central Plains, greatness is something only found in stories. When, I guess, our family's eighth-born son is given a fate of greatness, everyone is mystified as to how it will come to pass. The fate of nothingness received by the family's clever and capable second daughter, on the other hand, is only as expected. When a bandit attack orphans them, though, it's the boy who succumbs to despair and dies. Oh, God. Okay, uh, so desperate to escape her own fate of death, the girl uses her brother's identity to enter a monastery as a young male novice. There, propelled by, propelled by her burning desire to survive, she learns that she's capable of doing whatever it takes, no matter how callous, to, su to stay hidden from her fate. After her sanctuary is destroyed for supporting the rebellion against Mongol rule, she takes the, the chance to claim another future altogether, her brother's abandoned greatness. So that sounds super great. I have heard really great things about this. I like that it's kind of this Mulan-type story, I guess, with this, this girl, you know, kind of assuming her brother's place. I, that tends to work really well for me. I'm also just really intrigued by this. I don't really know that much about this, like, founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. So I'm very curious to see how these more historical aspects kind of, you know, weave their way into this. And I'm assuming we have some sort of fantastical elements here. I'm not sure what they will be, but I definitely want to find out. I feel like our main character sounds like a badass, and certainly I'm, I'm very intrigued to see her, you know, like, grasp for destiny and, and take control of, of everything. So I think that this is going to be really fun and I can't wait to read it. The next book that comes out July 20th is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. So this is an adult horror book, I believe. So long ago, Nathan lived in a house in the country with his abusive father and has never told his family what happened there. Long ago, Maddie was a little girl making dolls in her bedroom when she saw something she shouldn't have and is trying to remember that lost trauma by making haunting sculptures. Long ago, something sinister, something hungry, walked in the tunnels in the mountains and the coal mines of their hometown in rural Pennsylvania. Now they're married and have moved back to their home, hometown with their son, Oliver. And now what happened long ago is happening again, and it's happening to their son. He meets a strange boy who becomes his best friend, a boy with secrets of his own and a taste for dark magic. This dark magic puts them at the heart of a battle between good and evil and a fight for the soul of their family and perhaps for all of the world. But their family has a secret weapon in this battle, their love for one another. 
So this sounds really crazy, actually. It sounds like a really great horror book. I'm definitely excited to see what all is going on here. I mean, we, I am seeing reviews about like the thread, the scope, the pacing, the turns, just all being so crazy. And I think it's going to be really intense. I've seen so many good reviews about this and it seems just like a fantastic horror book that will just be really scary. So I am super excited to check this one out. So now we'll move to July 27th, and the first book I'll talk about here is Red Wolf by Rachel Vincent. So this is a reimagining of The Little Red Riding Hood. I think this is a YA retelling. So for as long as 16-year-old Adele can remember, the village of Oakvale has been surrounded by a dark wood, a forest filled with terrible monsters, a forest that light itself cannot penetrate. Unlike her fellow villagers, though, she cannot avoid the dark wood. She is one in a long line of guardians, women who secretly take on the form of a wolf in order to protect their village. But when accepting her fate means giving up the boy she loves, abandoning the future she imagined for herself, and breaking her own moral code, she must decide how far she's willing to go to keep her neighbors safe. So this sounds really fun. I like that. I feel like this definitely has a twist on Little Red Riding Hood in that she can turn into a wolf. <laughs> like, that seems really exciting. So I've read Rachel Benson's Shifter series, which is about, like, wear cats and I really love that series. You, I mean you can see a couple of them right here. So I definitely know that Rachel Vincent's writing works for me. I feel like she is an underrated author who I don't and I don't feel like I hear people talk about her books as much as I think they should. <laughs> I think that this is going to be a really great retelling and I can't wait to read it. The next book that comes out July 27th is A Good Day for Chardonnay by Dorinda Jones. So this is the second book in this Sunshine Vikram series and this is kind of like a mystery series with some paranormal elements from what I remember. So Sunshine is the sheriff in this New Mexico town and she, so she is running a small town police force and it should be a smooth carefree kind of job. Full-time sheriff and even fuller-time coffee gu guzzler Sunshine didn't get that memo. All she wants is one easygoing day that you know starts off with coffee or donut or three and ends out ends with takeout pizza and a glass of Chardonnay or seven. Turns out that's about as easy as switching to de decaf. She's got this bar fight gone bad. She has a teenage daughter hunting a serial killer. And oh yeah, the still unresolved mystery of her own abduction years ago. All evidence points to the local distiller, a dangerous bad boy named Levi, but she knows that he's not the villain of her story. Still, perhaps beneath it all, he possesses the keys to her disappearance. Or at the very least, beneath it all, he possesses a serious set of apps. She's seen it once, accidentally. So between policing a town that her chief deputy calls four cents short of a nickel, that pesky crush she has on Levi, which seems to grow exponentially every day, and we've got this raccoon that doesn't know when to quit, her life is about to rocket to a whole new level of crazy. Yep, definitely a good day for Chardonnay. So I, I've really enjoyed Dorinda Jones's writing uh, before. I've read the Charlie Davidson series as well as the first book in this series. Dorinda Jones has this like fun, sarcastic type of, of tone that works really well for me personally. I do think that this particular series, like Sunshine and her daughter, are much more level-headed and serious than Charlie, so it's just um, from the Charlie Davidson series. And I definitely like had a lot of unanswered questions about Sunshine's background, so I certainly want to find out more about what happened to her. The next book that comes out July 27th is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. So I think that this is a YA horror book, and we follow Ellery, who's just waiting for something to happen. Life in isolated Am Amity Falls, surrounded by an impenetrable forest, has a predictable sameness. Her days are filled with tending to her family's beehives, chasing after her sisters, and dreaming of bigger things while her twin, Samuel, is free to roam as he wishes. Early town settlers fought off monstrous creatures in the woods, and whispers that the creatures still exist keep the Downings and their neighbors from venturing too far. When some townsfolk go missing on a trip to fetch supplies, a heavy unease settles over the falls. Strange activities begin to plague the town, and as the seasons change, it's clear that something is terribly wrong. The creatures are real, and they're offering to fulfill the residents' deepest desires, however grand, for just a small favor. These seemingly trifling demands, however, hide sinister intentions. And soon, Ellery finds herself in a race against time to stop Amity Falls, her family, and the boy she loves from going up in flames. So that sounds pretty intense. I think it sounds like it's going to be really atmospheric. I like that we have this small town setting. Also, I'm very intrigued by, you know, whatever is happening with these creatures. Like, that sounds ominous. I have read House of Salt and Sorrows by her and really enjoyed it, so I, I know that her writing works for me. So I'm definitely excited to see what this new, you know, YA horror book has in store for us. 
The next book that comes out July 27th is Heartbreak for Hire by Sonia Hartle. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. right. I tried to look it up. Um, anyway, this is an adult romance. and I do have an arc of this that I'll be reading pretty soon here. We have Brinkley, our main character, who has a secret. To everyone in the academic world she left behind, she lost it all when she dropped out of grad school. Once a rising star following in her mother's footsteps, she's now an administrative assistant at, the, <laughs> at an insurance agency, or so they think. In reality, she works at Heartbreak for Hire, which is a secret service that specializes in revenge for jilted lovers, frenemies, and long-suffering co-workers with a little cash to spare, and a man who needs to be taken down a notch. It might not be as prestigious as academia, but it helps her stay for her dream of opening an art gallery and lets her exercise a few demons, all while helping, helping to empower women. But when her boss announces she's hiring male heartbreakers for the first time, she's no longer sure she's doing the right thing, especially when her new co-worker turns out to be a target she was paid to take down. Though Mark spends his days struggling up the academic ladder, he seems to be the opposite of a back backstabbing adjunct, a nerd at heart and, crim and criminally sexy sweater vest who's attentive both in and out of the bedroom. But as she finds it increasingly more difficult to focus on anything but Mark, she soon really realizes that, her, like herself, people aren't always who they appear to be. So that sounds like a really fun, just entertaining rom-com. So I think what drew me to this book in particular was the fact that our main character Brinkley, you know, was a grad student. And I think it sounds like Mark also deals with academia. So like as a grad student myself, I thought that that would be kind of funny to have those little touches. And I'm kind of curious to see how that works itself into the story. But also this just sounds pretty entertaining. I'm certainly curious to see what kind of hijinks happen with this particular company. So the last book I'll talk about today also comes out July 27th, and that's Just One Look by Lindsay Cameron. So this is an adult thriller, and I also have an arc of this, so I'll be reading it pretty soon here. But we follow Cassie, who is adrift. So she's <laughs> suffered an epic tumble down the corporate ladder and finds the only way she can pay her bills is to take a temp job reviewing correspondence for a large-scale fraud suit. The daily drudgery amplifies all that her life is lacking, love, friends, and stability, and leaves her with too much time on her hands, which she spends fixating on the mistakes that brought her to this point. So I guess while she's sorting through all these emails, something catches her eye. The tender and totally private exchanges between a partner at the firm and his enchanting wife. Cassie knows she shouldn't read them, but it's just, you know, one look, and once that door opens, she finds she can't look away. Every day, 20 floors below this guy's corner office, she dissects their emails from her dingy workstation. A few clicks of her mouse and she can see every adoring word they write to each other. But peeking into their apparently perfect life, she finds renewed purpose and happiness, reveling in their penchant for vintage wines, morning juice presses, and lavish dinner parties thrown in their stately Westchester home. There are no secrets from her, or so she thinks, but her admiration quickly escalates into all-out mimicry because she wants this life more than anything. Maybe if she plays make-believe long enough, it will become real for her. But when she or orchestrates a chance meeting with this guy in the real world and sees something that throws the state of his marriage into question, the fantasy she's been carefully, carefully cultivating shatters. Suddenly, she doesn't simply admire this wife. She wants to take her place, and she's armed with the tools to make that happen. So this sounds just like so much fun. It's, you know, uh, we have a character who's down on her luck and is like slowly becoming obsessed with this couple. There are some flaws that we don't get to see in, in this email exchange, so I'm curious to see just what that is exactly. But yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be an interesting, flawed character to follow. So those are all the books that I'm going to talk to you about today, and I'll leave in the description the other books that I'm considering so you can check those out as well. There's obviously a lot of them since I only talked about like 17 of the 40, I think, that I have on my list. So definitely, definitely a lot coming out this month. So I guess with that, let me know in the comments if you think you might pick up any of these books. And for your question of the day, what books that are coming out this month are you particularly excited to read? So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.